All right, welcome. In this video, I just want to continue from last video and prove this uh, recurrence relation, uh, prove some upper and lower bounds for it. Now, last, um, last video, we ended with a guess for what this was actually going to be, but um, I'm not going to write down, it was something like 4n squared plus 7n minus 8, but for us, in this video, all that matters to us is that we want to show that it's n squared, a theta of n squared, which means we have an upper and lower bound. We need to prove a big O and a big omega. And remember, that means a less than or equal to a b times uh, n squared and a greater than or equal to an a times n squared. These are the kinds of proofs we want from these definitions. Okay, This is what, hopefully at this point um, in, in the video series, we've got this sort of intuition uh, coming with us. Okay. So let's go ahead and, and try and tackle this one here. I'm going to break them into two, of course, upper and lower, and I'm going to start with the upper bound. Let's see what, what should we say here. Now the upper bound, we, we kind of want to say T of N is in big O of N in squared, but that's not exactly what I want to write because what I really want to do, and that's sort of what I've gotten up here with my shorthand, is I really want to show, show that it is less than or equal to uh, B times my function, which is n squared. And then remember, this isn't just for all the n, oh, let's make that an r, for n greater than n naught. Now, this theorem might not always work for us, but usually I want to try the simplest one first, and if it doesn't work, we can always change it later. And that's the thing, even though it looks like afterwards proofs are all, you know, perfect and polished, uh, they don't come out that way. They come out a little dirty and rough, and we need to, you know, polish them ourselves, make them a little bit easier. So sometimes you might encounter a problem along the way, have to go back and say, change a decision that you made. So let's keep going. If we might encounter that here, we might not. If we don't, then we're lucky, okay? So what kind of proof are we going to do? Well, we're going to do an induction proof on N like we've been doing before, okay? So how do we do induction? We start with a base case. And when we want to do a base case, uh, we usually start with one of our values. Um, uh, I like to pick zero or maybe one as a good starting place. Uh, if we did zero, we can see this might give us a problem here. We'd have to show something is less than or equal to zero, and this, this is not true for positive numbers, so this is going to be a problem. So let's skip over zero. Zero is not going to be a good choice in this case. Uh, let's pick one instead. Okay, then let's see what we need to prove. What we need to prove is that t of one, what is t of one? Let's go check. Uh, when n is one, it's three. So t of one is three. And we need to show that it is less than or equal to b times n squared. And in this case is one, so b times one squared is just one. So remember, when I do these base cases, I sometimes just put the little check mark here. But in this case, I want to say, okay, what condition is this true? I get to pick what B is, but I need to pick B's that are at least three. If not, my base case doesn't work. My base case does work as long as B's are greater than three. So let's make sure later on down at the bottom when I get to pick my B, let's keep that in mind. Okay, now remember in the inductive hypothesis, we've seen a couple different ways to do this in this series. We've seen maybe we'll just assume what we're trying to prove, but then prove it for N plus one. That's a possibility. Or we could assume it for the last one, n minus one, and then prove it for n. That's another way of going. And, and that, that could actually, where both of those could work here, partly because, as you can see up above here, uh, we're only dependent on n minus one. So weak induction would work here. But I do want to practice a little bit our strong induction. So let's just write it as a strong induction proof first. So that means assuming what we're trying to prove, but re rewriting it with a different variable here Instead of n, I'm going to use k. Usually it's k what I use. So I'm going to say t of k is less than or equal to b times k squared, copying down from above what, we, what we've got. And then for our restricted values, not for all of them, just for the ones less than n. n is the current one that we're considering in the inductive step. Now remember, there's two ways we could write this. This was the strong induction way, but we could also do weak. So why don't we just rewrite the weak induction way when we write it the weak induction way, which remember in this case actually works, we, uh, we actually get the term that we're gonna end up replacing in this first step. So let's just double check that here. So we're gonna go here, T of N to start out here. We copy down from our 
definition. And what do we want to do with that? We want to take that value and we want to replace the recursive term in it with what we've got written here. To do that, this is an approximation, so we use the less than or equal to term here. And again, we're replacing that t of n minus term, t of n minus one term with b times n minus one squared. Right, at this point, we usually just continue with doing some algebra. So let's just expand that one. Hopefully you've got some binomial expansion skills going on here. We get an n squared, we get a minus two n, and then we get a plus one, plus eight n, plus three. All right, let's just distribute and gather our like terms. So after distributing, we have a few of our terms with b's in them and some of them don't. So it's gonna be kind of hard to cancel those out. And then the other thing we notice is some of our extra terms have, uh, are just constants while others have n's in them, okay? Now, we really wanna just make our leap of faith. We kinda of wanna to get to here, but we're not gonna get there exactly in, our, in one step. Um, well, we could, um, but then we got, we got a little bit of extra canceling out to do over here. Um, but I'm gonna do something a little trick instead. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a promotion trick that can be used all, all, in all kinds of uh, approximation cases. This minus here, I end up wanting to cancel it out. And I wanna cancel it out with these positive things. And I'm lucky because the minus has an N in it and this eight N has an N in it. So those will be the canceling out. This extra stuff is just lucky bonus. I really don't need it. The eight N is enough to cancel this out. Okay, but to cancel this extra stuff out, I'm gonna promote it. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply both of these terms by n. And because I know n is greater than one in this case, that's gonna make them bigger than they already are. So let's just see that. And because that makes them bigger, that makes the whole thing bigger. And now I can gather those like terms together a little bit easier. My minus two bn and my bn cancel out to just give me minus a bn. So like I said, those were canceling out. That's a pure cancel right there, but I still have enough bn left over to cancel out. What's left? My 11n. And now I can do that leap of faith that, that I was mentioning in that last video. In the leap of faith, I'm gonna make sure this is true. I'm hoping this is true. When is this true? Well, only if this extra stuff that we added on was negative totally, less than or equal to zero. So again, we might do a little scratch here. We might say uh, minus bn plus 11n, as long as that is less than or equal to zero, then we're good to go. So let's move the minus bn to the other side. So that will give us bn is greater than or equal to 11n. And I'm gonna cross off my two n's there. And I'll just rewrite that as b must be greater than or equal to 11. And then usually I'll box that off because then I'll put a check mark here by this step, by my leap of faith, and say, yeah, my leap of faith works as long as b is greater than or equal to 11. Now I go back up here and I say, I had one check already, b has to be greater than or equal to three, b has to be greater than or equal to 11, so I'm just gonna pick my b, which b should I pick? Well, pick your favorite b, and if you don't wanna pick favorites, then just pick 11. So we'll pick 11, because that's the first one that'll work. And then let's also pick out our n naught if we'd like. One is the first one we proved it for in our base case. And so we're good. So we can, we can say we're done here. So we can just conclude. We can say by induction, t of n is less than or equal to b times n squared. And that's what we proved, okay? All right, so this was the upper bound, we now need to do the lower bound. This established the big O, we need to do the big omega. All right, so let's try the lower bound now, where we wanna show the T of N is greater than or equal to uh, A times N squared. Again, this is for all the N greater than N naught. For some N naught that we get to pick, we get to pick A and N naught. So we wanna do this proof by induction. Let's start out with our base case. Now, one thing you'll notice is that a lot of the math in this, uh, and this proof is gonna be the same, but uh, we're gonna to have to use a different trick because when we get to our approximations, uh, we're going to the lower bound now, not the upper bound. So our base case is actually gonna be fairly straightforward and simple, uh, just like before. Um, we got T of one, what is it? It's equal to three. We now need to show that it is greater than or equal to 
a times 1 squared, which is just a. So all we've got now is a slightly different uh, uh, condition. a must be less than or equal to 3 now, okay, not greater than or equal to 3. Once again, my inductive hypothesis, I'm going to do it the, the strong way uh, first. So that's going to be taking what I have above, rewriting it with a k. Assume t of k is greater than or equal to a times k squared uh, for the k's that are less than n. But we could also, if we need to, sometimes uh, I just do this on my scratch if it's a particularly complicated one. I'll write down the one I actually need. And since the one I actually need is written up here, what would it be t of n minus 1 is greater than or equal to a times uh, n minus 1 all squared. Okay, and that's the one that's going to factor into our first step here where we will begin again and, and, and this should be familiar from what we just finished. We start by copying down the, uh, the definition and then we're going to modify that definition by trying to replace the recursive term here using the inductive hypothesis Here's the weak version that states it explicitly for us. This is going to be greater than or equal to, what do we have here? a times n minus 1 squared plus 8n plus 3. Here you'll notice this is exactly what we got in our last one, except now we've got, uh, we're still going for lower bounds, but now we've got an a out front. So we're going to get an a uh, times n squared minus 2n plus 1. And multiplying through, we'll get sort of to the exact same location, 2an plus an a plus 8n plus 3. And again, we're at that place where we have things we want to cancel out. Now, in the last bit, we wanted to cancel them out. But in this case, we get a little bit luckier. Because we're going on the lower bound, these positive things, since they only make us bigger, we can say this. We can say plus a plus 3 is greater than or equal to zero. This we already know. This is no, this is nothing we need to prove. We know these are positive values, so we know that this is true, so we can just drop them out. We can just say a n squared minus two a n plus eight n. Those two I just dropped out because they only make things bigger. Now what that means is we just need to do our leap of faith, a n squared, can we cancel this bit out with this bit? Well, again, they're both n terms, so they're both of the same degree, so we can cancel them out. And again, here now, we need to be careful. We want those, if this line is going to be bigger than this line, we need these to cancel out to be positive this time. That means we need minus 2an plus 8n to be greater than or equal to 0, not less than or equal to 0 like last time. Now when I do that, I'm going to pop... I'm going to keep my 8n here, but I'm going to pop the 2an at the other side. Let's cancel the n's. Let's cancel the 2's. And what do we have? We have a must be less than or equal to 4. So what do we have up above? a is less than or equal to 3. a is less than or equal to 4. That was our other condition with our check mark here. So we must be done. We'll let the smaller one this time. Let a equal 3. And and not equal again looking up above we started at one so we're good to, to say one here and we can finish and so by finishing concluding off our proof here we have now shown the uh, big omega bound and so together we've shown our big theta of n squared now again if you want we can actually prove a closed form expression for this particular recurrence uh, we had that in the previous video, uh, go ahead and tackle that as an exercise. All right, thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you in the next video.